traditional spirituality, like Irish paganism, does it manifest in your entire life in every way? It gives you roots. We live in a very unrooted age and culture. A lot of us, I think, feel like that there's something missing in our lives. There's a hole there. We're trying to fill it with all these different things, especially materialism, or uh, trying to numb this sense of lack in our lives with uh, whether it's drug abuse or just mindless and constant entertainment or all myriad of things that seems to numb the, the pain or the existential dread for a little bit, but doesn't really fully do the trick. I find that traditional spirituality fills that void first and foremost by reestablishing our roots. It roots us not only in space by reconnecting us with the land, seeing it as a numinous spiritual thing, not just a lifeless dirt beneath our feet or or water as just liquid, but as very real numinous spiritual uh, entities. But also it roots us in time. These are ancestral traditions. We reclaim our place with those who have gone before us, on whose shoulders we stand, um, to, because of their striving, we're here today. And not everything about the past was great and far from it. And we have a lot to learn from that. But it also provides us with a clear-cut path, a way forward, and a clear way backward to look back at what did work before. And so knowing my place within the grander scheme of things, within the grander scheme of life, past, present, and using those traditions to be able to go forward in strength, in cultivating wisdom and the virtues of those who have gone before us that now we can improve upon. That influences everything. That is a tough question. They are all worthy of admiration and honor and um, all grant inspiration in particular Bridget uh, in the Irish Bridge is she she is the inspirer herself she is said kindles the fire in the head of poetry of creative impulse um she is the forge master. She guides not only the creation of the material, but symbolically the creation of the mental, of poetry, of, um, you know, as a writer of my, my works on the page, she is the guide behind that. Additionally, also the Dachda, who is the good God, he is an absolute inspiration of generosity. It said that from his if cauldron, none go away unsatisfied. And, you know, his lore is full of stories of his care for his people, his family. And I find that his lore is an amazing example and inspiration for us to also embody those virtues of hospitality, of looking after each other, of looking after 
uh, our family. And that goes way beyond family in the sense of blood, um, which even is based in Irish tradition with um, the kin groups being very, very broad. It, it's about those who are family by choice, not just by blood. And I think that's a beautiful thing that the Dagda goads us on to and gives us strength and, and the example to follow after in that way. Among the Norse deities, definitely Frey. He is the god of of passion and growth and abundance. And I find that, especially as I grow older, um, not that I think I'm particularly old by any means right now, but you, you start feeling it, you know, here and there. And I would say that turning to Freyr in my life is, 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 he provides a great reminder to always retain that youthful lust for life and vitality, which he grants, um, this symbolized through in growth in the fields and the earth. And, uh, he's a, a one of the Vani who are very deeply connected with nature. And yes, he's, uh, an incredible source of inspiration and grace towards always growing and having a, a vital tenacity for life. Not really. <laughs> that wasn't really always the plan. But I always wanted to teach. Um, there's actually a crumpled yellowed piece of paper laying around somewhere in a box at my mom's house. Uh, from when I was in, I think, second or third grade, where we were assigned to say what we would be or want to be in 20 years or when we grow up, something like that. And in my scrawl at the time, it says that I want to be a teacher. And as far back as I can remember, that's what I wanted to be. I would um, suffer my friends on occasion who were shockingly patient with me to uh, sitting down with me as we pretended that I was teacher and they were the students. That probably didn't last too long <laughs> now that I remember. But um, yeah, I, I just always found such joy in being able to share um, the things that I was studying and experiencing with others in order to help them on their own journey. And um, and go forward and study in those things together with people. So writing, I think, comes very naturally from that desire. Writing is an amazing way to be able to collect your thoughts and share them with so many other people. And that's how I became a writer. I wanted to teach, and writing is my medium for doing that. Yes, uh, the Irish Pagan Book of Rites is a guidebook. It's a prayer book for those on the path of Irish paganism or other forms of Celtic um, or even broader pagan spirituality. It's for those who are interested in all things Irish, especially the Irish language, because it's a dual language book. Um, everything is explained in English, but the rituals and prayers themselves are laid out in Irish, and English on the opposite facing page. So you can quickly go back and forth. You can learn the prayers and say them in Irish if you wish or just in English, or a little mix of both, wherever you're at. So the book is perfect for anyone who is on 
the Irish pagan path and looking to deepen their spirituality with uh, more um, laid out forms of ritual, or even for those who are simply interested in Ireland and the Irish language and want further resources for studying in the absolutely beautiful Irish language. Well, on a perfect day, I like to get up, get ready, head down to one of the local coffee shops, claim a corner in the back to myself, have a cup of coffee or two or three or four, and fire away on my laptop and just get as much done as I can, usually before lunchtime and then uh, lunchtime or afternoon time, I like to get out and then take a walk. Uh, Ideally, especially when the weather is more cooperative, get out in the woods under the trees, which I'm just super blessed to, to be in an area that is a, a gem of natural beauty. And that's where I glean so much of my inspiration for my work from is just breathing the, the scent of the pine trees and the lakey air into my lungs and Ah, then I can be regrounded and then maybe in the evening try and write some more or just uh, you know, charge up that way and be ready for the next day. I certainly do. I'm currently working on a book that seeks to answer the question, why Irish paganism or why any sort of paganism? After all, uh, why believe in uh, various gods for one? I mean, aren't most of the main religions of the world monotheistic? Isn't there a progression that we see in history from polytheism towards monotheism? So isn't this regressive to be uh, trying to go back backwards to some of these belief systems? Also, there's the question of, you know, in the modern age, we have recourse to science. Uh, isn't a lot of polytheism about um, or, or have its origin in a sort of ignorance about the natural world? You know, isn't Thor just a, a god of thunder because we didn't understand the mechanism behind thunder and lightning? And so our ancestors in their um, naivete decided that was a thunder god and surely we must be beyond such silly superstitions nowadays right i don't think so i don't think so actually and i think we have good reason to re-embrace these traditions nowadays and that's what i seek to lay out in my next work Absolutely admire J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, for one, I am a shameless Lord of the Rings nerd. An absolute nerd. Yep, I own it and love it. Uh, I know he's probably a popular answer as well. Uh, Tolkien is absolutely a joy to read because he is so influenced and well informed by native european spirituality now, yes tolkien was a very traditional roman catholic all his life but um and this is something i lay out in the irish pagan book of rights in so many ways europe uh, did not convert to christianity per se Rather, Christianity really converted to Europe. And what I mean by that is, um, especially Roman Catholicism, adopted so many of our native European traditions, it, it really is a syncretism rather than more so a, a pure form of Christianity, which in its root kernel form, I guess you could say, is really uh, a fulfilled form of the messianic longing in Judaism. Now, certainly it, it has that claim, but 
by and large, much of the, the ritual, the lore, the, the trappings, and even much of the spirituality of traditional Catholicism is incredibly pagan in so many of the best ways. And so it's not surprising that Tolkien, who also was an incredible fan and a very literate scholar on Anglo-Saxon uh, lore, mythology, and history, and the Norse Eddas and Nordic literature, uh, that he would have gleaned so much inspiration and been able to put it into his work in such a brilliant fashion, whether it's in, you know, all the the creatures that are taken directly from the Edas and sagas, such as dwarves, elves, um, ents even, um, etc. And to put them into such a, a beautiful tapestry that's so accessible to us in the modern age. So I find myself going back and rereading The Lord of the Rings or The Silmarillion over and over again. Uh, the Lord of the Rings is my version of the good book <laughs> on my nightstand. So um, additionally, uh, especially among us in the Irish pagan sphere, I absolutely adore the works of Morgan Daimler, who has done so much in her work to you know, bring Irish paganism to a wider audience of readers, of practitioners, of all those interested. And um, her work laying out all the descriptions of the gods and goddesses, of the lore, of the history, um, of the vital texts in understanding the roots of our tradition. Uh, her work is absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And um, I myself, in my own words, stand on her shoulders and the shoulders of many others in the Irish pagan community who have done incredible, incredible work ahead of me in order to start bringing uh, some of the sources and material of our tradition together uh, so that more and more can access it and practice it uh, effectively as a living spirituality for its day. That's tough. I don't know that I could choose just one event. If I had to pick one sort of era, I would love to go back to pre-conversion Ireland. And just to be able to witness and learn from those who lived in an Irish society that was still completely intact and whole with its native Gaelic culture and spirituality before the conversion to Christianity. And to, to actually see what the a druidic system looked like as a living, breathing society. To see what the rituals that we can only sort of uh, reconstruct nowadays from disparate sources, to see how those actually were practiced and lived out and performed when they were part of a living tapestry of culture. Yeah. It can be any year, any time, and um, during that era, put me there. I would love, love to see it just for a day, preferably on like Samhain or Belt, you know, something like that. What's my number one tip for an aspiring writer? Remember this, there's no such thing as an aspiring writer. You're either a writer or you're not. The difference, the writer writes, the other does not. So every day, sit down and write. And the next day, write a little bit more. And the next day, a little bit more than that. 
until you have a book. Keep writing.